What is up everybody? Adam here with E-Trailer and it's ski season. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Yakima Fat Cat 6 on my 2001 Chevrolet Tahoe. It comes in silver and it also comes in black. It's going to be able to get your gear to the slope so you can go ahead and have yourself a day. The Fat Cat 6 is designed to fit up to four snowboards or six skis. Depending on the width of your skis though and the width of your snowboards, you might be able to fit a little bit more on there, but it is a safe bet that six skis and four snowboards are gonna fit up on here. This is gonna have a nice aerodynamic design, so it's gonna be a little quieter than some of the competition. And one thing I love about it is one, the big old knob on the end. So the cool thing about the knob even if you have your icy gloves or whatever, you can go ahead and hit this knob. It's a big knob, so that's always good. You can clamp it down and it does come with locking cores. So that's always awesome. You don't have to grab it separately. And if you have a Yakima rack, you can actually use the same key system and key everything alike. So when it comes to ski equipment, you probably know just as well as I do, it's expensive. You gotta pay to play. So if we want to lock all of our gear down whenever we leave it, whether we're just kind of stopping for some grub in between slopes, it's just going to be very, very wise of you to kind of lock all this up because just again, everything's expensive and might as well protect your investment. The aerodynamic design is going to be a lot more quieter up on your roof compared to some of the other ones that you have on our website, just because some of them are kind of bulky. Some of them are pretty tall, but this one's pretty short and low profile. So I really like that. Another thing that really sets it apart is the hinge system, which right here, as you can see, there's a little hinge on the inside there. And basically it's gonna expand if you do what I do and kind of utilize the full length of the fat cat. So with this, it's gonna evenly distribute all of the pressure throughout all of the skis and snowboards. All the other ones on the website don't have that. So I really like that because I really like to maximize this thing out. Might as well get more boards on here for more friends, of course. And that's another thing that really sets this one apart from all the others. And there is one more thing that's super, super convenient. We actually used it here today. Whenever you're stacking up your boards, I don't take my bindings off my boards. I just think that's a waste of time. It takes a lot of time. So. What we do here is we don't remove any, anything. We can actually lift this thing up a little bit and this is just gonna make room for our binding. So it's just not gonna be hitting your roof. You're gonna see this issue a lot with factory roof racks just because there isn't a whole lot of space underneath here. But for some of the aftermarket ones, you might not have to do this. But just the fact that they give you this option is awesome. To sum it all up, basically the hinge system in the back, the aerodynamic design, and the option to kind of lift it up off your crossbars to make room for your bindings is really what's gonna set this thing apart. So just to give you an idea of if you're gonna have to do it, just measure from the top of your crossbar, about six and a half inches from the top of your crossbar to where the boards are gonna sit is what you're kind of looking at. So just measure your the distance from the top of your bar to the, like your roof and then the distance from your board to the end of your bindings. That'll just let you know if you're going to have to do it or not. I don't really think you really need to check that before you buy just because you can do this in a matter of minutes and it's not really that big of a deal. So you can either do it or not do it. But this thing really does add a decent amount of height to the rails in this position from the top of your crossbars to the very, very top of the carrier, it's about nine inches. But then of course, if you have bindings and stuff, that's gonna change as well, especially if they're facing up. And without the carrier raised, it's gonna be about three inches from the top of our crossbar to the bottom of where our skis and snowboards are gonna sit. And then from the top of our crossbar to the top of the carrier, it's only gonna add about five inches to the height of your roof rack. So one other thing you can kind of do, it depends on what your setup is. If you have factory bars, you're gonna have to use the mounting hardware that comes with it. But if you do have T-slots on your crossbars, you can grab a kit that's sold separately and that's gonna bring it down a little bit lower if height is a concern for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unload. I should be able to get to maybe three just from standing on the side of my vehicle because I have a relatively taller vehicle 
A lot of questions come through of if it's gonna work with your roof rack. So with this, you don't have to worry at all. You don't have to grab any extra parts for it to work with your roof rack. Out of the box, you're gonna have the options to be able to work with any crossbar that you may have. If you have the Rhino Rack heavy duty crossbars, that might be a stretch, but with the factory racks, we're gonna be good. And then if you really did wanna get it a little bit closer to the top end of your bars, if you have the T-slots, you have that option as well. So everything you need to put this on your roof comes in the box. So you can check that off your list. Let's go over the mounting options that we have. It all just depends on what kind of crossbars that you have. This all comes with the kit. We don't have to buy these separately. If we do have round bars or square bars, we're gonna be using this set. And basically how this works is we're gonna take this and it's gonna fit right into it like that. And notice we have a little indention right here. And that is gonna go over here and it's gonna line up with this indention. But of course, we're gonna have to open up the carrier to do so. So let me show you that. Let's hit the button on one side, line this up and then go through once I get it, just like that but we are not gonna be using this kit just because we have factory crossbars. So we're gonna be using the actual feet, but these do come with it, which is nice. So it gives you that option just in case. So we're gonna set these to the side for now and let's focus on these feet. I really like these feet. So watch this, we're gonna flip this up and then as I start to loosen this, this little clip holds in that, as you can see, just like that. So as we loosen it, it'll come up. We can pull this out. And then this is our little adjustment knob right here. But what we wanna do just to mount this to the fat cat, we'll take this off, take it off. Okay, so it's gonna have the same exact notch on the side. So we're gonna go underneath like this. We're gonna line it up with that notch, like that. Flip it back over. We're gonna open this up and we're gonna put a washer down and we're gonna put our knob back in. We're just gonna thread this. We're not gonna tighten it down or anything, just make sure it's in there. And we can do that same exact thing for the other side, but on the six fat cat, we actually have some options. So if you wanna have it overhang the side of your vehicle, which I do, we can put it on this point here. But if you don't really care about it overhanging that much, we have a second slot. So I'm gonna set it up with the first slot just because this is kind of what differentiates this from the fat cat Evo four. So same exact deal take our foot, take this off, like that. And this one doesn't have any notches, so we're not really gonna have to line anything up, but we just wanna make sure that the strap's gonna be facing the same way. So let's do that. And with that done, we can flip this over. All right. I kind of like to just let it sit on itself just because we can really get the threads out of that hole. And again, do a washer and then just thread this on a little bit. And we'll do that same exact thing for our second piece. Now with it up on our roof, I'm gonna fully utilize the overhang and put it all the way to the edge over here. And notice, since we didn't completely tighten down those little things up top, we can actually kind of rotate this around. And it's just gonna help us get all of the straps and everything strapped down. You wanna run the straps underneath like this. And as you can see, we have a lot of slack here. So the way to fix that up is I'm gonna actually put the strap on the other side for now just so it goes in easy. So righty tighty lefty loosey. As I start to tighten this wheel, it's gonna pull that band in, which just makes it a little shorter. So since I have factory crossbars, we're really gonna have to torque this down to the right 
a lot just because we have super, super thin crossbars. So if that's the case with you, just know you're gonna have to turn this wheel quite a bit to get it to fit. It does kind of help just to kind of move that strap around because sometimes it gets a little seized up. But again, we're really gonna have to torque this thing down almost all the way since this is the skinniest bar you'll really install these on. But the end goal here is to get a lot of tension. And this is kind of a lot. I don't know if I'll be able to really even get it up there. So that's a little too much. Too much, Adam, too much. So you're gonna have to kind of play with it for a little bit. But once you get it set, really, it's, you're not gonna have to do this every single time. Because this is kind of the best way to strap things down to your crossbars. I really like the band. So this is definitely something that I like that the other brands and stuff don't really have this technology. And now with this tilted back, I have plenty of tension, but notice how it's not really gonna stay there because this little trigger right here isn't completely faceted down. So now that that's done, we're gonna try to keep that in place and do the same exact thing for our other side. So now what we wanna do is take these little knobs in here and twist these up. This is gonna take that lever down to completely make sure the strap's gonna be nice and tight. And what we wanna do is tighten this down and there's kind of a cam buckle lever to where once we get it pretty tight, you can go like this. And you really wanna get it fairly tight to tighten it down. You're gonna do that for both sides. And then this is pretty much the end of just this one right here. So once we get that done, we can do that same exact process for the back one. Now that I'm loading up, I wanna put two snowboards on the farthest side and my bindings are hitting my roof. So now I'm gonna show you exactly how to lift up that side to solve this problem. What we're gonna do is take the key that was included with the kit the Allen key, and we can just take this bolt out. And this way, should be able to pull it. So now, what we're gonna do is lift this up. Now with this bolt pulled out, what we're gonna do is we are going to take this little clamp out Twist it off. For now. And now we can lift this up. And notice we do have a little slot right here. And we can reinsert this bolt. Go all the way to the other side and then we can tighten it down. And notice this threaded stud right here is gonna control that little latch and we need that to be down. So to do that, we're gonna take the washer and the little tool, kind of fit it in there. You kind of have to have it at an angle for it to work. We're just gonna go and thread this on and tighten it down. And this way, once it's tightened down, notice how that little latch is going down. So that's just gonna keep that strap from moving in this position. And we can do that same exact process for our other one. Now, problem solved. So now I can put my snowboard all the way up against there. My bindings aren't hitting. And that is the goal here. So now I can start loading up. And that'll do it for a look at the Yakima Fat Cat 6 on our 2001 Chevrolet Tahoe.